Hi and welcome back to Let's Talk Tachlis. Wow, we just finished filming a new episode. I promise you'll love it. You'll find it very entertaining, I hope, I believe. I'd like to thank you all for your tremendous support, ideas, comments, and enthusiasm for this podcast. Baruch Hashem, it's growing and it's becoming popular. It's all due to your credit. You can always email us at letstalktachlesnow.com. We want to hear from you. And as you can see, we are improving as we go along. And it's all with your help and input. I'd also like to welcome our new sponsor, Calibre Business Consulting. I'll talk to you later about them and how to reach them. A few technical notes. Please subscribe to whichever podcast format you're listening to. And also share it with your friends. After all, it's your home your venue, your podcast, let's together make it successful. Thanks again for your support. It's really appreciated and it, it's evident in the market. Baruch Hashem. So let's get rolling. Hello and welcome again to Let's Talk Tachlis. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, today we have a guest that personifies the goal and the mission of Let's Talk Tachlis. As you know, our goal is to bring ideas, visions, concepts from every good common Jew. We love common Jews, we love common Yidin. <laughs> and to us, every Yid is as Yiddish and a Shumer. And we know that there's so much wisdom and experience and practicality, let's call it, within every Yiddish person. It's a special gift we got from Hashem, from the Eibishtes. So today we have a very fresh guest, fresh in a good way, in a positive way. I would hope so. My friend Jake Klagsburn. Hi, welcome. So how are you? Baruch Hashem. It was Jack. fun driving into Brooklyn. Yes, Jack came to us all the way from, from Tom's River to good old Brooklyn. I think you have some relations to Brooklyn in your, uh, in your grew resume. Up, grew up not too far from here on 44th Street, 14th uh -huh. and 15th. Uh -huh, very nice. And for 48 years, this is where I lived. Wow. I know you made a big impact on our city. That's At me. <laughs> anyway, um, we... We brought Jack to our studio, to our podcast, because among other things, Jack is doing his working with uh, kids and boys that need special attention for psychological reasons, for behavioral reasons. And although this is not his, I believe, bread and butter, no. but he's doing it totally as a volunteer because he likes to do chesed and he likes to be nice to the world where he lives and to the people that surround him and we look up to such people so let's hear a little bit jack what's going on what's what's cooking not much Baruch Hashem. first of all thank you for having me here um uh, it's my first go around with these types of situations actually my second okay but so please i'm not a professional don't hold it against me i'm just a regular guy <laughs> sitting here talking to a friend yes so that's that's really what it is uh, but I do want to add on, uh, number one, I grew up in a Hasidic environment. I went to Yeshiva in Satmer. I went to Monroe, believe it or not. I'm actually the poster boy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and um, uh, I lived in Borough Park most of my life, or Flatbush for a big part of it, and then moved to Tom's River about three years ago. But when a good friend calls, um, uh, we always try okay. to accommodate. So these... Everything we're going to discuss is not, I'm not trained, I'm not licensed, there's nothing like that. These are just personal observations, I guess, from 50 years of living, um, uh, dealing with unfortunate situations over probably the last five, six years of being involved with um, um, crisis management and things like that with individuals and um, um, just living life. So you, mm -hmm. if you keep your eyes open and your mind open, you can always learn. And that's what I've been trying to do for the last <laughs> many years. And you're doing it well. Uh, I try. <laughs> so if you don't mind, let's talk a little bit about the, quickly about your past. Like, if you can summarize what 
in a tachlis, we had this let's talk tachlis, what all about tachlis. In a tachlis dicker way, like what, what do you think got you to change slightly the, the direction? Slightly, I mean, whichever way. No, yeah. Well, no, okay. I'm, so the, the truth of the matter is when you look at me, you know, trim beard, no payers, the first thing you're going to think that probably I just went crazy when I was 20 years old. And that's actually not what happened. Um, um, I was not the kid that was the, the Dalit student in class. I was an Olive Olive student. I love to learn. As I grew up, I just felt that certain things were not correct for me. And I remember my father telling me at the time, um, uh, it's okay if you change, but change to something. Um, and I feel that that's the biggest mistake that a lot of people make, that sometimes they run away from something that doesn't work for them. For whatever reason, we're not going to get into why. That the, the why doesn't matter. It's what you do with it. And um, um, and when I, I guess, as you call it, made my slight change, um, uh, it was to Rev Label Cats that passed away what was it, two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I started davening by him and learning there. And um, uh, I think that's been um, um, a progression upward for me as a human being mm -hmm. and uh, moved out of Bar Park probably about 15 years ago, I went to Flatbush and then moved to Tom's River when mm -hmm. Brooklyn became not tolerable anymore. <laughs> I talked to me about it. Um, so I want to, like, I feel very comfortable that you don't have any bitter memories for your past, for the way you grew up and for no. what caused you because it's a total different story to talk to people who are still bitter and still upset and still sad versus talk to people that went through a certain change in their life and came to certain conclusions but they said i want to do it in responsible and i'm, I'm connected i'm a yid i'm i am who i am but i feel that i can bring the best out of me in a different way in a different style yeah, personally i'm not I'm not bitter, I'm not angry. Um, um, I have no animosity, actually, towards yeah. anybody. I try to live my life, my wife and I we always talk about this, that, you know, a fact is a fact. Whatever happened, happened. So now you have a choice. You can either be bitter and angry with the fact, or you can be happy. The fact is not going to change. Right. So it's really a personal choice as well, to I how... I can see you still one day wearing long pious and a long beard. Yeah, you would say so. Like, my mother still has the hope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in good company. But I always tell my mother, I said, listen, I was prob I'm probably Erlicher now like this than the other way. So, wow. uh, so it's... And I'm it's, really proud of you. Uh, Erlichkeit is not, uh, has nothing to do with that. And I'm really proud of you, <clears throat> because Erlichkeit is the bottom line. So obviously I see, I'm starting to connect the dots and see how you shifted from, besides being, uh, doing whatever you do for a living, that got you interested in being involved with people in crisis because you, you have a healthy approach about these things. And so t t uh, talk to me a little, talk to our audience a little bit about, uh, in, in short, what you're doing. And, and it basically it basically just happened. So there's an organization in the five towns called Madregos. Um, uh, it's run by Rabbi Silver and a very close friend of mine, Shield Gate, but Rabbi Silver runs the day-to-day. -day. And there is a Rosh Hashanah program that they do for, I don't like to use the word the OTD because it's just, there is no such thing. Um, uh, but for kids at risk, kids that are struggling, um, uh, you know, whether it's with substance abuse, whether it's with life, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I was invited to go there by my friend Gilles about, or Yaakov Gate, sorry, Yaakov Gate, um, um, about 10 years ago. And we started going 10 years ago. And it's just happened. They started coming over to me and just asking me questions. Simply because I guess the knowledge that I was Hasidish and that I'm not at the moment, or not, it's not the way, it's not the lifestyle that we live at the moment. And uh, they felt comfortable just coming over, talking, asking questions. And uh, one thing I saw, Hashem just always gave me the right answer to give. When it, because the truth of the matter is, it's very hard to prepare. When somebody comes over to you and says to you, I'm an apicoitus. How to deal with this? How do I deal with that? And <laughs> But I am spiritual, but I am this. And my style has always been, there are other people out there that their styles are, you know, always to placate. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit more of a brutally honest person. <laughs> so, wow. and um, no, I'm just... I say it the way I see it, and um, I'll tell you one story. Mm -hmm. And um, um, there was a kid that came over to me, not a kid, he was 27 years old. And he said to me, um, uh, he says to me, I'm, a, I'm an apicurious, I don't believe in God, blah, blah, blah. but I would like to come back 
and start taking on some mitzvahs. So I said, so what's your question? It's like, how can I work with this if I don't believe in God? How does any of this thing work? So I said to him like this, I said to him, I don't want to use a name, I said, um, pardon me, but I'm going to say something maybe that might upset you a little bit, but I feel it's the right thing, and I think it'll help you if we discuss it, that you want, and if you think about it, because you seem like a smart kid, let's just hear me out. So I said to him, first of all, I said, let's first establish something, you're not an Apicarius. I said, you're Baltava, just like me. I said, the only difference is that you, you can't, you want to be able to sleep well at night. It bothers you that you misbehaved. So the only way you uh-huh. can feel better and sleep at night is saying there is no God. So if there is no God that didn't do anything wrong. So I said, we have to first establish that there is no real apicarsis here. Uh, well, there's an old story within the Tziv. Uh, Talmud of his came to him mm-hmm. and said to him, Rebbe, I'm an apicarsis. So he said to him, let me ask you a question. Did you finish Chimish, Rasha? He says, no. Says, did you finish Gemurah, Bavli, Yerushalmi? He says, no. He says, did you read Plato, Aristotle? He says, no. He says, you're not an Apicurus, you're ignorant. Um, you're to be an Apicurus, yeah, you just don't know. To be an Apicurus, you need to be very educated to be able to be an Apicurus. Most, unfortunately, in the situation that we find now, kids that are struggling, they like to use the word Apicurus and Kfira, is because I use that as a, as a tool to get attention more than anything. Um, um, it's and, rather, and I, and I think to run away from reality. It's, it helps you, obviously, because if your reality is and you're brought up that there is a Hashem is Baruch that is there, you know, and unfortunately being taught in the schools that he is the God of punishment, yes, you don't want to deal with that. So the easiest thing to say is I don't believe. So I said, first, let's agree that it's not a not believing, it's just you want to be able to sleep at night, and that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I said, the second question that he asked me was, but how do I get back to Yiddishkeit? I want to know that Hashem's work is going to accept me. I said, okay, I get that. So I said, let me just ask you a question. I said, if you approach life with that thinking, you'll never get married. And he looks at me and he was a little upset at me. He's like, what do you mean I'm not going to get married? What's the connection? I said, very simple. I said, you meet a girl, you start talking to her. Uh, you take her out, spend a lot of time with her. And there you don't question that you want to know I'm only going to spend the money and the time is if I know for a fact she's going to love me. But with God, the one entity that has promised you that I will accept you if you do the right thing, there you're questioning it. So that should make you think, are you really looking to come back or are you looking to be able to sleep well at night? I've tried. I'm not sure Hashem is going to take me back, so I'm not even going to start. I said, but you, that thinking is not real. That's just an out. And that was my first conversation when I started, I guess, how, getting involved how, in this. How did he take it? He was a little bit, he was actually a very smart kid. Um, um, he's in banking, he's a smart kid, and, and he was initially, he was a little bit taken aback by it, but then he thought about it, and he came over to me and said, okay, so what mitzvah should I try? Shabbos would film. I didn't know the answer to that. I asked, and I was told that Shabbos is, is the mm-hmm. bigger one, mm-hmm. that that's the Shabbos is the, is the one to try, and he still struggles. But he'll tell me from time to time, so listen, no, I went to shul, I did this, I did that. I was waiting That's to hear that he's a big rabbit. Uh, uh, no, he's, not pasking, it, he's not pasking any shilas, okay. but, he is tr- but he's trying to get better. He recognized, he recognized that what he was doing is he's trying to find an answer to be able to live comfortably with a, mis- with a misbehavior. And that's really what it boils down to. It's be honest with yourself. Just, just I've always said, just be honest with yourself. To all my friends, if, if I talk to somebody and he's misbehaving and he starts coming up with a million things, says, stop it. Be honest with yourself. You wanted to do what you did, and that's the end of that, and you'll be fine. But start, stop justifying it. And that was really, so wow. that was the initial introduction into that. And then it just, Crash I guess course. it blossomed, blossomed from there. Wow. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I want to... <clears throat> Let's, let's delve into it a little bit. Let's try to figure out, like, I know each case is different and you cannot compare apple to oranges. But more in a broad. In a broad, in a broad style, like, what pushes a person or a kid to feel uncomfortable with his surrounding, with, his, with the place he was brought up by his parents, by his rebels, by his uh, staff? And they all mean well, and they all mean to turn each boy and girl into fine Yiddish uh, students, eventually in Gilad, and family, um, family, heads of family. What is one of the main problems that 
pushes out some people out of the system. And and it's it's so sad for the parents and for the. For it's the, sad. It's sad for everybody. And it's sad so, for the per for the individual. Of course, yes. the most more he's the most. Is the biggest victim of because all. he suffers. He suffers. He suffers more than right. anything. So there's obviously, as you know, um, uh, there's many different reasons. There are people, unfortunately, that are assaulted in many ways, um, uh, whether it's by teachers, um, uh, family, friends. So we're, we're not going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. We want to focus on typical kid that's going to school, coming from a regular family. What would create an environment for a kid to say, "This is not working for me," and, and, and I have to readjust. So again, this is my opinion. I'm sure there'll be people that'll disagree with me and I'm open-minded to have a discussion about it. I'll, I'll post uh, you in the phone number. But yes, then. you can call me at any time <laughs> to have the conversation. But, but, but I want to take a little bit of a step back as to when, when Ari called me that we should have this conversation. It just something dawned on me one morning. Um, um, I was sitting with my friends. It was a Sunday morning and we just finished learning and davening. And uh, my friend mentioned to me that he has a business in Orlando and he used to drive down trucks with luggage for people for Yom Tov. I said, okay, great. Nice said, service. How many trucks? He said he used to have two trucks, but this year he is down to one truck. And he was not happy about it. I said to him, what happened? He said to me that um, um, a lot of people that used to come to Orlando started going to the Maldives and, and, and Croatia and the Carpathian Mountains, just everywhere but Orlando. So it made me think. And I said to him, these are people that went there for many years. He said, yeah, they've been coming for five, six, seven years. So it's like I personally do Business not go. Business is booming, no? Maybe, but I personally would do not go away for Yom Tov. I believe that Pesach, you should stay home. I think it, it uh, I don't find it to be the best environment when you go away to a hotel. I think there's nothing like having a Seder at home. That's my personal opinion. I salute. And I would never go. It, and, and again, it's not because of kosher, it has nothing to do with that, everything is kosher. But I think it's it's simply, there's no Seder like a Seder at home, in my opinion. And, and I think it's also important that we don't need to eat on on Pesach, um, uh, pasta and bagels and pretzels. Um, uh, the idea is to have manishtana, to ask what's different, not basically have everything what's you have. The same? It just takes, it just tastes a little different. Uh -huh. So, So I said, it just made me think, why would somebody go for five to seven years to the same place and then feel the need to go somewhere else? And it dawned on me because it became too popular that too many people started going. So now I got to be different. I got to outdo my friends. So this doesn't work for me anymore. But the question is, it worked for you till now. The weather is nice. You have a nice house. You have a pool. You have a meeting. What doesn't work? Because it became too common. Once it becomes too common, I have to do better. I have to step above my friend and I have to be a little bit better. And if you would look around, so that question, I guess, blossomed in my brain. If you look around, uh, look around at Kedeshim, look around at Shev Rochas, Achasen, Abam Mitzvah, Bat Mitzvah, whatever you want to call it, birthday parties, and add on top of that people getting drunk, doing drugs. What is the driver for people? Ultimately, it boils down to people are unhappy with who they are. They don't even know to look inside as to who they are. So the only way of lifting themselves up is I'm going to be better than everybody else. Whether by it means doing, by going to the Maldives. I always, the joke is, if you couldn't tell everybody, anybody that you were in the Maldives for Pesach, would you go? <laughs> the answer usually is no. I, I once heard a joke that in Europe, everyone just just like here more or less, but in Europe going, going away in the summer is a must. It was a must. Yeah, it was a must. So people couldn't afford it, just stayed inside the road. And they have, they have window gates like in Israel, it's called Trisim. Yeah. And they closed it to Trisim. You weren't, you weren't able to see the lights if they're on and off. And that's it. And they were there for three weeks and yeah. they came out with the luggage. I said, hello, I'm back. So. Yeah, and, and that's really what it is. So the question <laughs> is, if you can't tell anybody, would you really go? Most of the time, not. Right. It's all about when you're going to come back and say how great it was. So where, where does that come from? That, that's really the question. What is the drive that we see so much, especially in our community? If somebody has a caddy, he needs a Range Rover. Somebody has a Range Rover, he needs a Porsche. It's like always that you're always chasing, 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 whether it's with uh, the houses, whether it's with the secondary homes, whether it's vacations. What is the reason? Mm -hmm. So I, I guess that made me think uh, of a concept of um, individualism versus being part of a community. What, what is that underlying concept we grow up 
and there's a lot of pros to it. We grow up as part of a community. Whether it's Hasidish, Litvish, American, it really doesn't make a difference. We're all part of a community, whether it's shul, whether it's schools, whether it's just a community, or whether it's Hasidus, it doesn't really matter. Um, um, we grew up as a great community. People take care of each other. I still remember, and I'll always remember what it means on Yom Narum to be in Satmar in, in Davening with 10, 20,000 people, some wow. Tostoida. That is, that is something you don't forget. There's something amazing like yeah, that. Rabu, rabu. Yeah, rabu, the, even the Berches Kahanam you yeah. remember. Wow. Um, uh, so the whole concept, it's a beautiful concept. But I think what gets lost in there a little bit is that you, people lose their individuality. But that's already when somebody is 20 and 25. But let's back up. A kid goes to school, they're two years old, three years old, they go to Chayda and everybody's very excited. And we're coming at the Chayda, the kid's gotta learn all of this. The kid's gotta learn whatever it is that he needs Finish. to learn. Whatever right. it is. And as you grow up, going through the grades, um, there's a box. You either fit in or you don't fit in. So if you're not a Balkishan, and for whatever reason you struggle, you get labeled, and that label can unfortunately follow you for the rest of your life and it can follow your kids. And I've seen it happen with kids that I went to school with, except if they got lucky and they made a lot of money. But if they didn't become rich by buying a lottery or having rich parents, it, it stuck with them for the rest of their life. Their, shidduch, their own shidduch was affected. Their kid shidduch was affected. Everything is affected. Why? Because we take a kid, a person, and basically say to him, because you couldn't learn the olive base or because you couldn't touch a toys as yeah, well as the speed. next person, then you're no good. And there's an old saying, um, uh, you know, Albert Einstein said that if you, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it's always going to think it's an idiot. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we did. We, we took at times kids that didn't have a particular kishon or didn't have, they were not the smartest, the brightest. And if you were not an olive olive, then you were nobody. Okay, an olive, but if you were a bias, bias plus, it was over. And, and I've watched that happen. So what that does- I want to slightly <clears throat> um, um, correct something. Or challenge, that's okay. Not challenge, but just a touch up. I think there's a big awareness coming slowly into all the Hadurim and all the schools today. I see all the new Hadurams, all the schools are being built, have next to the classrooms, there's a lineup of five, six small rooms where kids get individual teaching and individual learning and individual observation by, by separate staff members besides the regular and that's And that's know. amazing, but I want to ask you something, I mean, Ari. Yes. If you were that kid that goes there and you're eight years old, right. what does that do to you? And what does that do right. to your self-esteem? Right. So the so, kids, when they're bullying you, they're busy telling you that you're the dummy that has to be in special ed, call it, for lack of a better Correct. Term. So it's, it's, it's still not worked out so well to, <clears throat> to bring in a little pride or a little bit dignity, I'm sure. As I'm long sure as you system. keep it separate, you're never going to be able to give it pride and dignity because it's separate, it's identified. Yeah, they did something. They created a smart class and a dumb class. So every year the parents are fighting to put their kids into the smart class, even when the kids don't belong right, there. Right. Even when, it, I think I heard from Y.Y. Jacobson once said, it's a sharp vart, but it's, but it's a true vart that he said, he was always wondering when he was learning Chumash, how could, it says Babal Pa'or, I think was the Vayda I don't remember which one it is. And he said, how could parents do that with the fire and everything killing their kids? He says, but when he watched what's happening with some of the schools, it makes sense to him that you have parents that are fighting to get their kid into a class where they really don't belong. They will never succeed, but they're gonna be able to say, Prestige. my kid is in the, the better class. Uh -huh. And it's about the prestige. They're literally, literally sacrificing their, chi their, their kids for their own, and, and what drives that? Because if you don't know who you are and you're not comfortable with who you are, then you're always, all you know is the competitiveness. All you know is standing above somebody else and being better than the next person. And, and I think that's, that's, it's a shame actually. Um, um, I wanna, I just start interrupting you. I wanna add it in Shidichim as well. Um, I'm, we're hoping to have one of the, f one of the next podcasts, a very big expert in Shidichim. And many people bump into the same issue that some parents don't want to don't don't want to take the best match for the except the best match for the child actually it's what's if it does not match them. And that's why, unfortunately, the divorce rate is through the roof. Correct, unfortunately, 
and there's so much to, 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 to talk about it and to learn about it and to adjust all these um, pre, pre-existing conditions. Because I think it boils down, I think ultimately it's always going to boil down to one very simple thing. Are you okay with knowing who you truly are? your kishoyness, your malice, and your kishoyness at the same time. And if you're okay with looking into yourself and being comfortable with that, then you wouldn't care. But if you don't have the capacity and you never taught what it means to be introspective, to look in a little bit and, and, and look into yourself a little bit, then you're always going to be chasing every at every aspect of your life, whether it's schools, whether it's shidduchim, whether it's whatever you're doing, it's always going to be that chase. So the question is, a kid is five, six, seven. No one expects him to look in. No, it needs to be and taught. To judge himself. It needs to be taught. How, exactly. How does this transition happen that a person should slowly learn not to look at the fleshy life around him, at the competitive life around him, at the excitements, and want to achieve the goals and be like this person, like this person, and start thinking, who am I? What can I be? What's my potential? Where's my potential? And how can I bring myself to, to be the best potential I can without being damaged or being out of the box? Like, how can I stay in the system and still get, like you say, some individuality? So, I, so I, I, re- I heard actually, I heard a podcast, <laughs> another podcast. I, well, besides I, 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 this apologize. I apologize, yeah, but I did, nah, did listen this a bit to a different podcast. And, and this woman was saying a very interesting thing. She said that when she grew up, her father... They would sit at dinner, and a father would go around the table and ask every child, what have you failed at today? Versus Mm. what most people do today, what have you accomplished today? And the idea behind that is to make it comfortable to understand that it's okay to fail. Um, uh, For people that like baseball. So let me talk to you a little bit about our new sponsor, Caliber Business Consulting. In business, just in our personal life, we all have ideas and plans we'd like to implement so we can be more efficient, more profitable and more successful. Most of us often are envious when we see our competitors doing things so smooth and so effective, but usually we're stuck and we're having a difficult time to figure out how to actually change it. Say hello to Caliber Business Consulting. They will listen to your challenges and custom tailor a detailed plan that is actually doable and guide you as to how to overcome your obstacles so your business will also run efficiently and profitable. Email them at info at caliberconsulting.nyc and you'll be glad you did. That's info at caliberconsulting.nyc and I thank them for sponsoring. Let's continue. And we all know Reg Jackson, and we all know the greatest baseball hitters in the world, but we don't, nobody ever remembers how many strikeouts they have. I think Reg Jackson was, I think, the, the leader in strikeouts. How do you know? Jesus uh, somebody just mentioned it to me. I don't know those kinds Come of on. things. And look, even at Thomas Edison, how many times did he fail till he invented the light bulb? It, it's, it's, we are so afraid of failure that we don't teach the kid that it's okay with that. Look, let's look at just at a regular chayde. You have 25 kids, 26 kids sitting in a class, and, and the kid that was for here and didn't know. But maybe he's, a bal- maybe he's an unbelievable bal- chesed. Maybe he is very warm and, and he's got tremendous loads of empathy. And, but what now happens is he's now, the rabbi puts him down, or maybe doesn't put him down, but doesn't make him feel, makes him, doesn't make him feel real good, let's be real. And the kids, I'm yeah. sure, mention it when they're fighting with him or whatever, it gets mentioned, a shtech here, a shtech there. You take his kishroinus and you made it all about one thing and everything else gets pushed to the side. And the concept is to... Now, I don't believe in participation trophies. I think that's just ludicrous. Um, um, that's, I'm sure you know what well, yeah, those things are. Maybe you um, explain uh, to the audience in short. Yeah, and it's just as long as you're here, you get... A, you get that doesn't make sense either right. because obviously you get... You get you we count for the purpose. Car. There's gotta, right. You got to get something for the effort that you put in. But um, uh, it's, it's build up each kid and the constraints that they have and, and adjust to that, whether it's done privately or publicly. If a kid is very, um, as a big balch, said, make sure to bring that up. Um, uh, don't focus on that he didn't know his fair hair, but focus on, wow, I watched this kid do this for this other kid. What a beautiful thing it is. Here is a present for that. I'm so, using that as an example. The, 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 There's many the problem different is, things. I'm sorry. The problem is that you have a rabbi or a teacher sitting in a class with 25 kids, like you said, 
and 40 percent of them have a good good kishoyness 30 are middle range and 30 are below average and it's so so difficult for a rabbi even a trained rabbi even a professional to have his three hours and serve each kid according to their capabilities and needs and performance it's all it's almost in, uh, uh, impossible to that's it's definitely impossible <laughs> so, but, so but i actually heard something and i just remembered now while, while you were asking that question um if you if you have a class that is like you said that you have 40 percent great kids sharp minds you have another 30 percent that may be not the and sharpest some, and i think the numbers are even but whatever the number it okay. doesn't matter what right. the number is yeah. it, it's just uh, as using that as an analogy and then you have 10 percent that just totally not there they happen to be here physically but mm -hmm. in no other sense of the word who is the rabbi teaching do and who should the rabbi be teaching to most of his time what happens is they teach to the sharp kids correct that's not what they're supposed to be doing the sharp kid doesn't need him the second level that's who needs him the middle level but the problem is they don't focus on the middle level they focus on the mitzvah so all that focus goes to the mitzvah and that middle level now starts getting shifted but, to but, the but, side but, but, the it's, it's human does, it's human it's, if, well, you, if you sit with a friend your age okay. yeah if he's a smart and a pleasant and a batamata person you enjoy his company but that's why, but that's why we're sitting and talking versus teaching and that's why teaching is not for everybody right. and you have to be able no, to identify that and say you know what no i gotta put my effort to the kids that actually need it the medicine is gonna know anyway because he's gonna get it way quicker than the kid that actually needs that so the mistake or that i and i've heard this and i don't remember who heard it from that that's a big mistake that some i wouldn't use rabbis because this is teachers and it goes across the board they tend to teach this, probably in every education in, in, system in, in, in the world in every education system yeah. that they tend to teach the smart kids versus the kids that actually need it mm -hmm. and, and i think that will make a big difference first of all it's going to make the kid feel good how many times if you really think when a kid misbehaves how many times is it a call for attention how many times so imagine that the rabbi gives him the attention or the teacher gives him the attention before that in the in a positive way in a positive way versus the other way then you wouldn't have to act out to gain that attention again these are broad conversations it's not like you could take a brush and just go and it'll be fixed it's just rather conversation something to think about something to discuss but i think a lot of it has to do at home that if you see your child maybe is is a great artist is great with music is great with whatever it's your responsibility as a parent maybe they might not be that great at academics but build what they need to build with their kashroyness and build on that and make them feel like you don't have to be perfect at everything it's okay not to be perfect at everything it's um like i said before i think there is some advancements and openness in parents, I agree, 100%. In parents to come closer to these things but it's still a long stretch because our our structure is human nature human nature no and not only that our structure our own upbringing yeah calls for the big tachlis again we are in the tachlis so this zone, is yeah? so, tachlis no, zone. so listen i want to tell you the tachlis of a yid is to to serve the ibish in this world yeah but this but there's but there's no, no, one I'm, there's I'm, more I'm, than I'm, one way to skin that I'm, cat that's I'm the totally point i'm totally agreeing with everything you said i'm just talking about the challenge of it challenging part of it because our, our goal and our tachlis in this world is to deserve the Eibishter and this is our biggest priority and this should be every year and every kid and every girl's biggest priority to serve Hashem that's what we came down to this world for however I agree with you that the people that have difficulties either the kishroyness or they don't have the focus or they don't have the capability to blend in in the group and be in cookie cutter style education system should get much much more attention and much more individuality like you are promoting rightfully so but i'm just saying it's it's a very big challenge to 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 take uh, education systems in some yeshivas some schools have five six eight thousand children coming into the building every single day i hope they have rabbis to uh, teachers to accommodate that and I, they usually do and and hopefully they have the right people to actually do that the point is but you're forgetting in my opinion, forgetting one very important factor. You're correct. Um, um, 
what the tachlis is and what we do. And I sit and learn in the morning, and I and I love it. And it's I give every morning two hours. It's learning, davening, all of that every morning from five thirty to seven fifteen every morning. Don't call me five thirty. I'm not okay. calling you at five thirty. Most people, most of my friends, don't want to be called that at that time. But you're forgetting a very simple thing. Part of your tachlis is also to give this to the next generation. And do you really think that you're gonna a kid that has grown up with that? harshness and always feeling like the outsider because he was not the top of his class that he's going to enjoy doing anything related to Yiddishkeit or he's going to either become a robot like you see unfortunately how many people do you see yes they wear the lavush and they have the strimal back and they have the beard but they're empty there's nothing there why because nobody ever nobody infused them with that love of that so I think, yes, you're right what the tachlis is, but the big, there's a bigger it's tachlis not. is giving it to the next generation yes, as well I and agree. giving it over the right way. Now, don't get me wrong. You're talking here about thousands of kids that grow up fine and, and it works for them. Now we can get into the argument what's considered work or not work, but it works the way the parents want their kids to grow up. But unfortunately, we are dealing because the Jewish population grew so much that we can't ignore that even to call it a small percentage because that small percentage is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids. Out of the many. So out of the many thousands. So yes, the bigger, the positive side is, the bigger your negative is going to be as well because it's percentage-wise. So we can't just ignore that either. And we also have to be realistic out of that positive side. And, and that's the truth. When was the last time you've seen somebody that exuded and actually felt true joy or happiness. And I'm not talking, by the way, do you know the difference between happiness and joy? Yes. What's the but difference? But I'm not talking, you're, What's not, the you're not talking in Yiddish kind, I'm talking right? no, I'm, you, you, in people in your life, but especially in Yiddish guide. And I'm going to ask you this in a, in a read. First of all, what's the difference between happiness and joy? So joy, I think, is a more, is a individual, is a general, is a general term for good life and enjoying life and, and things that are, supposedly good for me around me and happiness is an inner state the inner feeling an inner um, state of mind that the person feels satisfied with it's not doing things that make me feel good at this time happiness is something that is a state of a mind so you're not gonna mind if i actually flip it on you yeah you're okay. right you're right happiness is from things right it's it, things you become you're happy correct. I made you a get something Joy is inner joy. Right, correct. I'm joy sorry. is just joyful. So if you would look, go into Bismedrish. Go into any Bismedrish. How many people are truly joyful? I can tell you it's going to be the guy or the person that is truly into Avoid Hashem and he loves to learn. He has that inner joy. He is all involved in it and he loves it. But then you have 70% of people that are basically, 70% is a big number. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to use percentages. But there's still a lot of people that just go through the motions. So why is that? So you have um, to understand, again... I want to shift the numbers a little bit. Shift it. It doesn't matter. Because it's not about the amounts. It's not right, about right, the amounts. Right. I'm trying but to make right, a point. point right. The point I'm trying to make is the mechanicals. that... Mechanicals. It's, it's about when you don't feel it, when it's not been infused in you from a place of love and a place of accomplishment and a place of competency then it's more becomes more I'm just going to go through the process. You go through the process, listen, I'm part of a community, I'm not an individual, just part of it, I have no choice, I have to put up with this. So what ends up happening is when nobody looks, they misbehave or they think nobody looks, but their kids always see it and the kids always feel it, so who ends up suffering? So I think it's bigger than the kid that is falling to the side. It's even, it goes into what we call that positive part mm -hmm. because unfortunately, look around, look around at a kiddish on a Shabbos. How many people drink more than they should. How many people, unfortunately, now became the norm is do weed more than they should? Why are they doing this? What's this need for this? Because there's such an emptiness inside and they're always trying to find themselves and just look for anything to not make me look here. I keep myself busy with whatever I can just not to look in here. And that's why you have, in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of people are gonna hate me for saying this, that's why you have the private planes constantly. That's why you have people dropping hundreds and thousands of dollars in steakhouses, sitting with friends and whatever, drinking and doing drugs and doing whatever they're doing. It's because they can't fail. They cannot afford to look inside and just take a step back and just, just look in there. They can't handle it. So let's let's talk <clears throat> it's It's almost 
unreasonable to expect from the system to 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 cure and correct this this big this big uh, failure how how, how do we make it then? I, I wouldn't use i wouldn't no. use i wouldn't use the word failure no, because it do, works do, for no, hundreds and, and thousands of people correct and i'm talking for the individual people who are who feel who feel like a failure so in, in my humble opinion in my humble opinion it's it's learning to be okay that you're not the best at everything but how do we it starts, how do we, it starts it starts when you're younger I was going to say, I want to focus a little it's at intro, home. It's, it's introspective. It's about learning to, to build up your child at things that they're good at. Yes, there are times you got to punish a child. <laughs> it's very normal. But we got to build up. We got to build up. Our, I mean, you know, we use the word child and that's really, you know, that's wrong, I guess, to a certain extent. I guess build up humans. You know, I try to make an effort. We have a minion, a 630 minion that I started about two years ago in Baruch Hashem. It's going great. And I make an effort when somebody walks in the door is to greet them by name. Give them a hug at this or that. How you doing? How's it going? We never know what somebody is going through and what's going to make them feel better. And that's on a very broad Broadly. level. But you can do that in a very, in a, in a very rifle approach as well. Right. But, but it's I, people need to be okay. Correct. But what I'm trying to say that it's probably the core of it has to start at home. I agree. Because number one, there's no way, there's no, it's no possible way for a system to accommodate and cater and serve and so many is, people. And a kid is more at home than in school, okay. so it's 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 gotta and be at home as well. So this is really a, a, another podcast we need to have is to talk to the parents and not to talk to enlighten them and and bring them into the to the reality. That they have the biggest, uh, not only a high, the biggest possibility, and they are the only tools that can start validating the kids for who they are, for what they are, and for what they have. And I, I think parents have this problem competition within within their own within children. Within themselves, so within their own it's, children. So I, I'm a big believer. You know, I, I've been for 31 years. I like to work out. That's one of my mishigas and some things that keep me sane. Yeah, you look shape. And people always ask me, um, uh, like, how do you do it? How, and I always tell people, just be aware. Forget about the lifting weights, that's nothing. It's mostly 80% of your food intake. It's be aware of what you're doing wrong. Be aware of who you are. Be aware of what's going well for you in life. Don't always focus on what you need to beat. Focus on what's working for me. I, I, I think I, I mentioned you a while back when we talked. We wake up in the morning. What's the first thing that we say is moida ani? I mean, there's a million things you could say the first thing you wake up, or maybe we say that in sure. Why is it so important to say that as soon as we wake up? Because I think the first thing is extremely important is to say, I'm thankful for what I have. I'm thankful that I can see. I'm thankful that I'm breathing. I'm thankful I'm not in a hospital bed. If you start becoming thankful and 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 recognizing of what you got going for you, then you can start building on something. But if you're consistently fighting the uphill battle and fighting and fighting and fighting, you can't focus on what's working for you. And those two things, don't, they, don't they, they're mutually exclusive. They don't right. mix. Um, um, I want to add an acute, acute word to what you said. <clears throat> the end of Moidan, it says, Rabu Aminu Yeah. What's, what's the real shot? Before you challenge me, remember you challenged me before? Did I? With the happiness? Yes. And the joy? I don't know the answer. You, tri you tripped me? Rabbi Menuseich, what did Bechemlu? She 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 with your mercy with the Rabbi Menuseich. Rabbi does not go on Bechemlu. Go on Bechemlu. Rabbi Menuseich means you trust your faith in me is very large. You the Abish that trust me that I am I can perform and I can do. I'm going. I'm not going to let you down. And I thank you also, besides the thing you just said, and be thankful and appreciative. You, I thank you for having trust and faith in me, and I will not let you down, and I'm going to run and conduct a beautiful day. That's the meaning of Ravana Sech, which is a very... Okay, so I see that's something I learned today. Good, thank good. Well, appreciate sure. Okay. It. Tomorrow you'll we'll say it differently. But, but uh, again, I mean, uh, it's not about beating a dead horse. It, it's just... You know, I told you I like to listen to my to my things, and I, I heard a great a, a great saying, and I have to look up the verbiage. Is that when we do not build on competencies, then we end up creating a life of competition in the worst way. That unfortunately, so many people they celebrate failures 
versus then celebrating successes. And the reason for that is because it's an internal happiness, unhappiness. So you only get better when somebody else is failing as well versus just being happy for the person. And that has a lot to do with being internally happy. I think to celebrate failure is... Uh, is I think it take, it's a certain sickness. It's more. It's, it's not more a sickness. Than, it's unfortunately it, most who's people, failure. Your own or no, 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 no. Somebody else's. So you, somebody, somebody had failed in business. Ninety percent of ninety. Again, I'm not going to use percentage. It doesn't make sense to use percentage. But a lot of people, they're like, oh, okay, you know, they they don't. How many people really have the empathy? He didn't do this. It's like they, they glowed in it versus really feeling bad for somebody. Or somebody comes and tells you, man, I just it was so great. I made a million bucks. How many people is like, man, I wish I could have made that. You know, there's a joke that I, I'm... Uh, it's uh, not really failures, failures between... But you're, sure it is failures. It's, it's people are in business, but it's part of that. Because if you are unhappy and you're not appreciative of what you have, you don't want the other person to have it. That's human nature. So when a person tells you they lost something, like, oh, at least I'm... It's the way it is. And, and the other one is, oh, I did something well. Oh, should have been me. So there's a joke that this, this, this billionaire went over to a guy mm -hmm. and said to him, what would it take for you to be happy? He said, I'm a billion dollars. Oh. He said, okay, great. Meet me tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I'll give you a billion dollars. And please bring two of your friends. I'm going to give them $5 billion each. By the way, I yeah. don't know what the rest of the story is. Yeah. But he can call me 5.30. He can call you <laughs> 5.30. So the guy says, you're giving me a billion and them $5 billion? Wow. The guy says, what do you care? You just said for you to need to be happy, you need a billion. What do you care what the other person is getting? But that's the way our brain is wired. So you need to always try to, to overcome that. And, and I think, again, that starts when you're little. It's about appreciating effort. So that is the point. Yes, you can't, you're not always going to get in business. You're not, effort is not going to get right. you to the top. But when you're growing up in an interpersonal relationships, if somebody is making a real effort in something, we got to appreciate it. We got to show them it's okay. And that's why I really appreciate the dad that says to a child, what did you fail at today? And he would say what he failed at that day. Because a kid looks up to a dad, so they want to see that it's okay. It's not the end of the world. And the bigger part of it is to learn to be comfortable with yourself, right. to being honest with yourself. How many times we just, we're dishonest to ourselves because we try to convince ourselves of something. Being wow. honest with yourself, being introspective, looking into you and being comfortable with that, it takes a long time. And I still struggle with it, but I, was I still ask, where it. are you, one to 10? <laughs> I am probably started out as a one like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but for me, hiking is my thing that his brother, I figured out what his brother was, by the way. His brother was hiking. We call it his brother this, but it's going walking in the woods. What that was, was hiking. going on in the brain while, while you're hiking? The truth is, it's what you wanted to. And the idea is to be able to unplug and let go. For me, it's simply about just, just thinking. And it doesn't matter what the thought is. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not that afraid of it. I'm not going to say I'm way far from perfect from it, but I at see, least I try. You're getting away from giving me, from giving yourself a mark, right? I give you a mark. <laughs> I would say my mark now is probably between a five and a six. Oh, nice. I took Over the me, hill. It took many years to to get to the place where I'm not that afraid of myself. The only downside to that is then you blame yourself too much for things. Right. So it's that there's no, the other I side of the coin. I wouldn't worry about you. Oh yes, blame trust me, I do. Much. I do. Nah. I do. My wife always yells at me. She says, "Stop faulting yourself," because I'll always say, "What did I do wrong?" But that just but that took me years, right. and I'm way far from perfection on this one. Okay. But the one thing I do want to give a mention to, yeah, and I'm sorry, the, I gotta yeah. look this up, okay. is you asked me about what could be done. There's a school in Lakewood. Okay. Uh, the name of the school is, pardon me, I have it on my phone. No, it's fine. Please forgive me on it's that fine. one. Our audience I'm sorry, it's a smartphone. It's very tolerant. I, I, it's a smartphone, I apologize. There's I'm a, sure a school. It's a good filter. Yes, obviously. obviously. I'm uh, called Benoist Brocher and Chetvas High School. Okay. That it's run by Rabbi Pekhie, and he did something that I find is amazing. What he did was he created in each grade three, three. I'm sorry, um, um, three options, and each option has a different strength. Whether it's math, history, social studies, whatever it is, and the kid can choose the beginning of the year if they have a particular strength. Wow. They can pick that class. That was the word I was looking for. Sorry, the class. So what that does is. It allows the kid to build on a strength of theirs. You have a kid maybe that is just bad at math. If you put him into a regular class, there's going to be a subject they really are going to fail. But these, these classes, 
So instead of creating a schwache class and a great class, you create strengths. So this is a strength in one area and strength in another right. area. So what it does is it allows the kid to say, okay, maybe I'm not that great at this, but I know I'm good at this. Wow. And, and I think that makes an unbelievable difference because Impact. you don't get st stamped with anything. Wow. The, 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 you're, sorry, you're going to the Schwacha class. Okay, you know what happens right. then. None of wow. us want that. Well, it's really an amazing story. I, it's a pity we have a constraint of time. Do we? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Just we, kidding. We I'm, did just, well. I'm the one that has to drive I, home. I, I, <laughs> I, I think we just got into it. We just started touching the, the deep and sensitive points. But I'm sure our audience will be very amused and amazed by what they heard here. And, um, and, and, and like I said to you, I'm open-minded, you know, I, I mean, I agree that this is not the end all. This is matter, just as a conversation more than anything. It's not the answer to anything. Right, but our, it's just a it's conversation. It's an eye-opener. It's just a conversation. It's an, a yeah. conversation about a very important thing. And we have to ask for Seattle de Shmaya that we should... Uh, nothing works without it. Correct. That all our Mechan Chem and all our the people who are in charge of the curriculums and all the yeshivas and all the Chadurim and all the schools should have the Seattle de Shmai to to guide and, and steer the ship. I would add right a little something the, to that. The individual ships each, They should have Seattle yeah. de Shmai to not let their ego get in the way. You're not gonna like that, but no, unfortunately no. I know you're not gonna like that, but no, because, because focus on I don't it. wanna I don't wanna, wanna open this I'm not disparaging anybody. All I'm saying is it's very easy in these situations to, you have Nagiyas, you have certain Nagiyas. That's what I'm saying is that if Seat HaDashmaida, the Nagiyas should not be, be there. That's Listen, Seat HaDashmaida needs for everything. However, I am strong, a very, my, my strong opinion is that all Mechanchem try their best. Yes, I agree with all you. work hard. That's why I said they need Seat for that. Yeah. And it's very, very difficult to be a Mechanach and to have so many Besides your own, your own, the, your own bag that you bring to to to, to the Moises every day, so many children, like we spoke before, different types, different natures, different levels. You got to deal with a million things. That's and why I'm not a teacher. And the and the management, yes. But however, so I don't want to focus and start the Pandora box to talk about. No, no, no. About I just, the, I just said that's why I added it on just, is. just as a note, just as a. So it's, like, it's, for, Seattle, for the sake of Seattle Shmaya, it's worth mentioning. Yes. We should all have Seattle and Shmaya. And I really want to thank you for... My pleasure. For coming it was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. And it was, it was a, a deep conversation that I didn't expect we we're going to go to this direction, but I'm always ready for good surprises. I hope you survived. Your blood pressure is okay. Yes. Okay, just and we invite sure. our audience to share the thoughts, the feelings. And bring as, it. Bring I look it. forward to it. I got no yeah, issue. I'm not going to tell them everything you said about him. And if it's bad, but, oh well, that's life. No, that's just, called being okay with failing at something. Yes, if I, I failed, fine. You better. Yeah, yeah. But but if you come at me with something, it, d let it not just be an opinion. Back it up. If you're gonna <laughs> teach me, educate me. I got no problem yes, with that. You're ready. To, you're sponge. You're ready to be educated. I try. Very good. Thank you so much, Jack. Thank Appreciate you. it. And let's keep on doing the right thing. <laughs> <laughs>